Hello there, welcome to The Real You. This is Susanna. Thanks so much for choosing to watch my videos, for subscribing uh, to my channel, and also for all your comments and suggestions. This video will be on these persistent negative emotion states or tendencies. And I have touched briefly this subject several times in some of my previous videos, but this time I'd like to take my time and uh, share with you some, let's call them, crucial factors on why certain tendencies are harder to change or seem harder to change for you. And we'll also do a little tapping session together on the subject. Many people wrote me sharing with me their experiences, telling me how despite everything that they try to do and despite all of their efforts, certain aspects do not change that easily. So let's look together on why this is happening. And of course, each case is different. There could be many reasons for that. And in your particular case, there could be particular reasons for this negative tendency of yours to be so persistent. As I'm not talking here only about negative emotions, but also about all kind of self-sabotaging patterns or tendencies through, uh, through which you are sabotaging your health, your money, your relationships, your love life, your work, etc. However, beyond the specificities of each individual, there are a few aspects which are common to these persistent patterns. And we're going to look through some of them one by one. And the first one which I would like to bring to your attention is that uh, most of these uh, cases, when we deal with these kind of chronic uh, emotions, you'll have to understand that these aspects are contained and manifest in the body. Let's not forget about the doshas and their uh, influences on our emotional reactions, where vata tends towards anxiety and fear, pitta tends towards control and anger, and kapha tends towards uh, attachment and addiction. So we have to keep that aspect in mind, that the body is actually provoking and uh, creating regularly and uh, during the course of a life, the same type of emotional patterns. Now, beyond these doshic tendencies, we have to understand that these hard-to-change tendencies are recorded and encoded in your body. And let's look at what this means. All the experiences that you are having in your life, mental, emotional, of whatever sort, they are happening always through your body. Your body is your vehicle. It is the place where these experiences are taking place. At a biological level, the laws, the rules, are pretty straightforward. Your body is a learning machine. Apart from its instinctive basic functions meant for survival, your body creates patterns through repetition as reactions to certain external factors. Ayurveda stresses as well that all of your repetitive gestures make up who you are. Everything that you eat repetitively, everything that you think or say repetitively, all of your repetitive gestures, actions or movements, positions, they make you, your body, your health and your life as they are. Man is a creature of habit. And all of these habits are simply learned behaviors and mechanical responses. They are not conscious choices. For instance, when a person during her first years of life experiences repetitively and for a long period of time, the same type of emotional responses, such as fear or anxiety, for instance, chances are that this person will experience later on in her uh, life pretty much the same patterns. Moreover, apart from uh, these patterns which were created in our lives during uh, our childhood as responses to specific situations, they are these patterns which are inherited from our parents, from our grandparents, from our grand-grand-grand-grandparents. There is a transfer of patterns happening from one generation to the next. From an Ayurvedic perspective, the reproductive cells of mom and dad 
at the moment of conception, they contain the information on their doshas, on their doshic imbalances, on their emotional tendencies, on their patterns and undigested or traumatic experiences. And I'm not going to go too deeply into this, uh, as this is another beautiful subject to discuss some other time, but just briefly for your information, according to Ayurveda, there are seven tissues forming the body, and the reproductive tissue is the last one, is the essence of all the others, containing all sorts of subtle imprints and information which is transferred uh, to the next generation, to the baby. So to summarize this point, most of these hard to change tendencies of your life are recorded through repetition in your body, either through the course of your life as responses to different events happening in your childhood, or they could be transferred to you from the past generations at the moment of conception. Now another important clue uh, to deduct from this point is that these patterns are not you and this is huge they are not you they are not yours they are simply happening through you manifesting themselves through you and through your body and your body can be re-educated through repetition now let's move to the next subject. Now while at the biological level things are pretty clear and straightforward, there is only one body, there are creel rules, we learn by repetition, etc. At the mind level, things get really complicated. And as hard as it may be to admit and to accept, we really need to start seeing that most of our lives is actually happening to us that we are being pushed towards various directions by various forces of which we have no clue, leaving the illusion of choice. What we call I is in reality a sum, a mix of all sorts of undigested patterns which were created or transferred to us. God knows when, God knows how, and God knows by whom. And they are just manifesting through us. Almost everything in our lives is a pattern or a learned behavior. What you call you is not really you, as strange as this may sound. It is very hard to admit that we are not one and that these patterns are simply using us, expressing themselves through us. They have a life of their own. And I'm pretty sure that many of you have already had some glimpses of that, looking back at your lives and seeing how certain key moments or choices in your life that we call choices just happened. When you met that person, when you divorced that person, when you chose that class, when you went for that job. We like to believe that we have choices and that these were choices. In reality, they're just patterns pushing us to take some decisions. And we also tend to believe, or actually we like to believe, that what we call positive aspects of our lives, everything that is good, everything that is positive and happy, that were choices while everything else and all the bad events, negative moments in our lives were accidents or bad luck. <laughs> we like so much to divide reality in two, but in truth, all of them positive or negative just happened. We have the illusion that we are one because we have one body and because of this sense of I am which is always there. In reality there are many patterns using us, manifesting through us. There's many voices talking through us. There's mom talking, there's dad talking, there's the school teachers talking, 
there's a TV talking, the commercials talking. I need this to feel powerful. I need this to feel beautiful. There's Facebook talking. You think you are one, but through you, all the time, manifest permanently all sorts of patterns. And unless you start to be connected to the permanent in you, they cannot be dissolved. And with this, I'm getting to my third point, which is, we cannot change a negative pattern in our life by using another pattern. And this is also huge. If you get this, if you grasp this, you will see instantaneously why this aspect of yours hasn't changed yet. And as I was saying, not all of these patterns are what we call negative. And this is where it gets really tricky and we get to be confused and we start to lose focus and clarity. Some of these patterns disturb us, they make us suffer and therefore we see them as negative and we want to change them. While others, we see them as positive or something which is important or necessary for us and we don't even recognize that they are patterns. However, positive or negative, they keep playing us. The desire to grow, for instance, which we consider uh, a positive aspect, right? This desire to grow, you want to become better, you want to become a better person, you want to evolve, to move to the next step, or you want to become a multimillionaire. All these are also patterns. What wants to change a pattern in you? And also, what is discouraged or disappointed when something does not change in you? These two are patterns. So while you try to change a negative pattern using a positive pattern, you fail to recognize that they're both mechanical responses. This is so important. Please try to get this. You have to see that they're both limiting you. And this is where usually people get stuck. And this reminds me of dear Alan Watts saying, when you feel free to feel stuck or unstuck, then you are unstuck. So this is one major clue on what makes some of these patterns seem and actually become so hard to change. So let me repeat this because we learn by repetition, right? You cannot change a negative pattern within yourself by using another pattern. Patterns are just patterns. They are mechanical responses. They have no intelligence in themselves. There is no will in there. There is no you in there. They do not fix anything. They do not understand anything. They cannot change anything. They have no meaning and no purpose. They're just automatic responses. And now my fourth point is that a pattern can truly be dissolved when we are connected to our center, to what is permanent in us. And what is permanent in you, do you know? is that which does not change nor get influenced by the manifestation of these patterns. If you observe them long enough and you start seeing how they come and go, you will start to get a glimpse of this permanence in you, of this sense of I am beyond them, which does not change. So, how do we get to apply this information to very concrete, hard to change negative tendencies such as depression, for instance, when everything is so dark, when everything seems so close to collapse? And believe me, I know how this feels and I know that it is possible to go through it. First of all, I've been there. Secondly, 
I work with people every day dealing with all sorts of patterns. I'm a pattern whisperer. But what you really can do, and please listen to this carefully, don't try to get it through your logical, rational, cognitive mind. Just listen to this. What you can do in these dark moments is to have the courage and to dare to remember who you are right there and right then when it happens while you are experiencing these negative dark states to have the courage and dare to remember who you are and attempt to connect or reconnect to your center each time you do it this muscle will get stronger and stronger so the key, if there was a key, to change whatever in your life is to connect to your center and observe all of these patterns as they show up and as they're doing that, they play within yourself. And to bring awareness in. Even if just for one brief second or moment. And to do a conscious action, however little, when these patterns are manifesting through you such as a conscious breathing or tapping for that matter. So here I go, I say it again, nothing really changes unless you are connecting to your center. I know that this material will stir up some questions and reactions in you, so please feel free to share them with me at the email uh, address uh, below. And uh, since I talked a lot again, uh, I'll be making a separate video with the actual tapping session, so please stay tuned and I'll see you very shortly. Thanks for watching.